GearNetwork.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. Hi, this is Jeffrey Weissman. You might know me from oh, all sorts of films and TV shows. Pale Rider, Twilight Zone, Back to the Future 2 and 3. Saved by the Bell? I don't know what you know me from, but know me now from All Bets Are Off with Robbie Vegas. What's up, Rock Soldiers? This is the rock star Robbie Vegas with a brand new episode of the All Bets Are Off podcast. And today, my guest is one of the founders of Revolt Tattoos in Las Vegas, Nevada. He is the winner of Season 3 of Ink Master and coach of Season 12 of Ink Master. That's Joey Hamilton. I'm really looking forward to bringing you guys this interview, so I'm not going to waste a lot of time because I'm going to let Joey do all the talking about his career. But I am very excited, and I'm a big fan of Joey's watching Season 3 of Ink Master uh, back when it aired, and then recently on uh, Paramount+. Plus. I remember thinking how obvious it was that Joey was going to win it, to me anyways. I mean, there's a lot of talented artists on Ink Master every single season, but sometimes there's just that one guy that stands out from the very first episode, and for me that was Joey. So this is going to be really cool, and uh, let's not waste any more time, and let's get Joey on the line. If you have a business, you need a website. What's the best way to get a website up and running? Choose a website hosting company that makes it simple, like Pair Networks. Pair has over 20 years of experience managing the entire digital ecosystem for thousands of online businesses all around the world. Pair makes it easy for you with do-it-yourself website building tools and features, including simple drag-and-drop page design. And they have guaranteed U.S.-based support technicians ready to help you whenever you need it, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Right now, when you sign up with Pair Networks, you receive one free month of web hosting. See for yourself how easy it is to build your website for free. Visit pair.com slash free to get your month of website hosting for free by using the code QUICKSTART. That's pair.com slash free promo code QUICKSTART to get started today. Joey, thank you so much for being here on the All Bets Are Off podcast, man. I'm a big fan of your work. Thank you, buddy. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, I want to take this back uh, farther beyond Ink Master and beyond tattoos in general. When did you realize that you had any kind of artistic ability? Honestly, really young. Uh, art runs in my family. I've got a couple of florists. I actually have another tattoo artist that's in my family, too, my cousin. My grandmother was good at art, so I've always kind of known as a kid and even through school that I've had a talent to draw and just kind of be artistic. Do you remember about what age you were when you realized that you wanted to take that ability and put it into tattooing? Oh, uh, yeah, easily. That was about 20, let's see, 26. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I Yeah, I started late in tattooing by, because uh, I was, I, I actually had a scholarship to go to uh, college, to art school. But my older brother was in the military, and he was getting married and driving a, driving a BMW. And I thought, man, that looks cool. So <laughs> I joined the military instead of going to art school. And oh, I did uh, uh, ten, 10 years in that. But so my ninth year in, I knew I wasn't going to stay in the military. So I started looking around, and I uh, had two choices, look into tattooing or look into painting motorcycles. Oh, and wow. I just kind of fell in the... I started the tattoo process first, and then I just kind of stuck with that. Were you tattooing before? You said you had a cousin who is also a tattoo artist. Were you tattooing before him, or did he start before you? No, no, I started before him. Oh, okay. Here, I mean, I was, I was into it pretty good five, six years before he got into it. Oh, okay, gotcha. So with Ink Master having a resurgence lately on different streaming streaming platforms and things like that, are you finding that your popularity within the tattoo world is growing again for the second time, you know, this many years later from season three. Oh yeah. It's been eight years since I was on the first time. And now that it popped back up on Amazon and Netflix and all a couple other things, I definitely see my social media group like by 25,000 within a couple of weeks. Wow. You know, uh, you got to figure all these kids that were eight, 10 years old, you know, even if you're 15 at the time, now it's eight years later. So you're in your twenties. 
and now you see my face on there. So it's just, it's good for me, good for my business, for sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I got to say, like, you you were one of the artists, um, you know, I remember watching season three uh, when it first aired and then rewatching it again recently. And just from the very first episode, it was clear to me that you were the winner. And do you think that that was, you know, something that was going through your head at the time? Or were you just still so focused on, you know, I don't know how this is going to go because you just seem to stand above everybody else right away. You know, I, I did a TV interview before uh, before I started on the show. And it's kind of funny that I the lady asked me kind of the same question. And I said, you know, when they cast people to do these shows, they cast the guy that's going to do one thing, another guy does another thing. And I looked at her straight in the face. And I said, they cast me to be the winner. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's, it's uh, you have to have that confidence doing these shows. Of course, when I got there and I'm good friends with Jimmy Litwalk before the show. I'd already worked with him before. So I knew how good he was. Mm -hmm. um, Craig Foster definitely was an amazing artist. So getting there, you know you're going to be at the top. You may not assume that you're going to win it, you know, and you don't want to assume you're going to win anything because, you know, but you want, you still need to have that inside drive to, to compete or to try and do good. You know what I mean? I didn't go there to try and do bad, so. Yeah, right, right. And now it's, it's more than just tattooing, though, when you're on the show because you guys are exhausted. You're doing six-hour tattoos every single time you're tattooing. You're doing the flash challenges. And it, that had to take a toll on you mentally to be there that long and just be pounding away and working constantly. How did you deal with that? You know, uh, being ex-military and getting stuck overseas multiple times on short notice for not long periods, I, I had already had that ingrained in me that that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I didn't have difficult part for that wasn't that you know i still got to talk to my wife it, you know what i mean it wasn't like i was cut off from all social media or, or my wife but i dealt with it pretty good i think i you know some of the guys within three days were crying like i, I need to go home and you're just like we just got here yeah. so it, you know it's uh i think i i kind of like i said i kind of was used to that part of it no the separation or I guess in, in that same vein of what we're talking about with, you know, you said the guys are crying after a few days and it's real stressful. How much of the drama that we're seeing in the house is actually the real deal and how much of it doesn't even make the air? Because you're on for, you know, with commercial breaks, it's what, like 45 minutes an episode and you guys are in the house for days and days and days. And, you know, how much of that is, is real and how much of it are they saying, you know, this guy's talking shit about you. You should say something about it. Is it does that ever happen? Well, that's, yeah, exactly. That's how when they're shooting these reality shows, uh, they could have me and Jimmy in one room talking and say, oh, I don't like this guy. Well, lo and behold, here comes that guy walking in because, you know, there's cameras all over the house. There's, you know, multiple cameras from different angles. They want you to have that interaction and to kind of, I would say, I guess, talk shit to each other. We were probably the only season where we're one of the few ones that, didn't try and do it as much i guess i mean later on they, we, we did get into the the rut of that stuff mm -hmm. but i think like i said i knew jimmy before and when you go to these tattoo conventions you do what's called tattoo of the day you have a I mean, 30 to 100 guys competing to win one trophy and that's what we were trying to make it like for us personally like we're like let's let's do tattoo of the day in here where I'm not trying to throw you under the bus. I'm trying to let you do your best tattoo. So if I beat you doing your best tattoo, I'm proud of myself. And that's how we looked at it compared to a lot of people look at it like, why I'm not going to give you the hardest one so it makes you look bad, you know? Yeah. It, you know, in, in hindsight, I bet Jimmy wishes he didn't do that <laughs> as much. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. It, it, it is a competition and you do win money at the end, but we are proud of ourselves on how we acted or how we you know, went through it. But yeah, they, they do try and get you to, they, they want you to say stuff about other people and you want to defend your stuff too. In the same token, you know, you want to, if somebody's talking bad about your stuff, that you want to say something to retort it. So. Yeah, of course. And I mean, in that same token, uh, you're probably one of the last seasons who didn't have as much of the drama. I feel like, you know, moving forward, it was like, a ton more, but yes. I never saw you personally really uh, do as much of the shit talking as as everybody else, even on your season. Yeah, I, th I think my shit talking is in a different vein. Where I, where just like one, you know, on one of the 
episodes they got me talking to Jason Clay Dunn and he's all like, oh, look, if you give the guy a win and he got a big head. And that's when I said I got multiple wins. I'm used to that kind of jabs where it's like back and forth where it's kind of fun. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Not like a true, like when Josh called Tattoo Baby a bitch, you know what I mean? Like that's out of anger or stuff like that. I'm used to like the military kind of like let's dog each other and have fun doing it. Right. More yeah. than I mean it and I'm going to like just try and tear you down. Right. And and that kind of set you apart from everybody else in that vein, too, because of that. But also another thing I noticed is, so you guys are doing six-hour tattoos, and we're seeing about 10 minutes of the tattoo process uh, when it airs on TV. So I guess I'm kind of curious as when you're working on it, are you guys taking breaks? Is your canvas getting any breaks? Or are you just going nonstop and just really trying to hammer this thing out? The majority of mine, I'll, I only finished early one time, and that was when I did the neck tattoo. The rest of them were like down to the wire, um, and rarely, rarely did you get a break. If you had to go to the bathroom, it was like a quick, quick little break. You know, it's, it is what it is. You have six hours, and they do not go, okay, everybody take ten minutes. It's literally <laughs> you have six hours to the T. I brought a couple of numbing agents with me, so that definitely helped me out whenever, you know, you, you're on hour four and a half, you know, and the person's squirming around real good. I have some, you know, some stuff that has lidocaine in it, and I would shoot it on them, so it would pretty much almost deaden it. So yeah. they would, I would allow me, allow me to work. But, you know, that didn't work 100% of the time, but it definitely helped out. It's crazy to me too, because so that was legit. When you would see Dave Navarro do the countdown, three, two, one, everybody stop. You guys were literally all stopping right then. Yes, the countdown was not how it plays out, but that's like all TV stuff where they they'll shoot all that sequence in one shot. Mm -hmm. Like he'll walk around the room and go, "Okay, five minutes." Okay, you know what I mean? Yeah, right. And then he leave, and then they all leave. <laughs> they'll they'll do a walk around. One time, about maybe two hours into it sometimes. Yeah. And then that's it. They go home for the day while we're sitting there working. Ah, uh, yeah. And, okay. You know, that makes sense because I'm like, man, so the judges are just kind of lingering around for six hours. But yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah, usually not. Yeah. <laughs> so how often do you actually say, you know, would you do a six-hour tattoo in your actual shop? Uh, that's every day. Is it really? I mean, that's, yeah, that's where another thing of my benefit, like I've always worked in street shops or – you know, you walk in and go, hey, I want to get this, you know, wolf with the tree background with the, you know, mood. Mm -hmm. And you have about 30 minutes to get it ready to go. And then, you know, uh, some of the shops I worked in, your shifts were seven, eight hours. Mm -hmm. So by the time you eat lunch, you tattoo, you're literally tattooing about six hours. So you have to be done with this half sleep in six hours. So like I said, that helped me out. But that's what I'm used to. I'm used to six hours sitting down but I'll, you know i'm older now i take i'll take my break every hour hour and a half i'll stand up for 10 minutes and, you know i'll eat my you know eat lunch and 15 minute lunch or whatever so yeah it's all it's normal now that's actually that's probably short <laughs> before it was like eight hours and now it's like I'm, I'm just like i'm tired and i still tattoo six days a week so wow that's incredible and you are uh, yeah. one of the founders of revolt tattoos correct Yes, me and uh, Sausage used to work at another shop here in town for about five years before we, we knew about year two into it that we wanted to do our own thing because the owner wasn't a tattoo artist. And, you know, we've all, when we work for other people that don't, aren't sitting there grinding it out like us, it's hard to give up our money to somebody else like that. It doesn't have the same vision as we do. So right. that's why I called that's what we called it Revolt too, is because we wanted to, you know, we're, we're fair to the artists, we're fair to the customers, so, you know. But yeah, me and Sausage uh, came up with it. We're actually on year seven already. It's crazy. And that, that's amazing, too, that uh, you guys are the, the founders because you win season three. He goes on to be one of the finalists of season four. And that that's mind-blowing to me. Yeah, and this, when they were filming my finale piece at the shop, mm -hmm. I kept saying, like, hey, Walter had applied with me when I went on, but he didn't make it on. But I kept saying, hey, you got to check this guy out, you know. So the producers were there, and that kind of helped him get on, you know, That's for awesome. his season. That's but really I felt cool. bad for him because I was like, man, I had a great experience. I, you know, it was so much fun. And and then he goes on, and he's got Scott Marshall against him. And it's like Scott's like trying to team up the whole house against him because he's one of the better artists, you know. 
Oh, yeah. To be honest with you, I really thought that, you know, Sausage was going to win it because he really is insanely talented. And that, that was one of the yeah. guys who, even during the Flash challenges, you're going, he's good at everything. Um, yeah. And, yeah, no doubt. Technical above, above and beyond. And tattooing next to him for, I think, about nine years now. Like, I, it's just like mind blowing on how we always feed off each other. I'd see him do something and then he'd see me do something. And it's always a little bit different than each other. But yeah. We're taking, taking stuff from each other all the time. Well, I guess that brings me to my next uh, question, too, is the Flash challenges. Some of these things are real out there, but you guys seem to just know what to do immediately. Do you have any time that we don't see on TV to practice or, like, you know, you're, you're doing these things where it's, like, make a picture with gunpowder or, you know... Oh, no. No? <laughs> That's it. You walk in there cold and, you know, I've never used a metal etcher or, you know, the half that stuff. Almost everything we did, I've never done before. So that's that's why, like, when I did the lace torso with the tiger face, yes, it wasn't as like it, it wasn't like I tattoo because I've never used that tool before. You know what I mean? So right. of course, somebody that's airbrushed before or done stuff before knows how to use it. It's going to look better than mine. So it's always funny when they they kind of talk shit about you say oh you don't you're not as good as an artist well no i am i just never used this tool before right so. and i guess that's kind of why i was asking that question because just being a fan of the show and watching i'm thinking in my head like there's there's absolutely no way that some of these things can come out that well but you guys just really are thrown into it yeah yeah but that's when the, the ones that look really good like the guys usually had experience in something along, they're doing. Yeah. like james danger harvey could probably cut whatever out of metal because that guy's into that kind of stuff yeah you know what i mean so <laughs> right that makes sense now after you won season three did you find yourself doing all kinds of like appearances and interviews and things like that for a while afterwards uh yeah i did i did a commercial for taco bell i did a commercial <laughs> for miller high life just off the top of my head i've you know just extra tv shows uh i did a paris hilton's one of her shows at gigolos on showtime like I don't, you know, it's just, I, I don't even want to sit down and think about how much stuff I've really done, but, <laughs> but it is kind of cool to sit back and think about it too, you know? Yeah, yeah. I know you were saying uh, when they brought you back for that, that clip of season four finale or whatever, and you were like, I'm just waiting yeah. to go on vacation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I still, well, I've taken some vacations, but not like my I. I say vacation. My wife still doesn't consider it vacation. <laughs> but <laughs> if I'm not if I'm not if I'm not working, it's a vacation to me. So yeah, right, right. <laughs> hey, everybody! This is Lauren Marie Taylor, creator and host of the Not the Final Girl podcast. Okay, so every horror fan remembers the Final Girl, right? You know, the one who can outrun and outsmart the Jasons, the Michaels, the Chuckies. I think you get it. But what about the girls and, yeah, the guys who met with an untimely end? Those of us who were tortured and tripped, dragged and killed, don't we deserve some props? As Vicky in Friday the 13th Part 2 and Sheila in Girls Night Out, I know what a drag it is to succumb to those masked and wardrobe-challenged killers to not be the final girl. On my new podcast, I'll be chatting with other women of horror who share the same fate, Special guests include those final girls, as well as the writers and directors who created our characters, only to give us an early expiration date. And, if they play nice, we'll let some of those crazed killers of horror tell their side of the story. So join me, Lauren Marie Taylor, on the Not the Final Girl podcast. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you get the alerts when the episodes drop. Thanks for listening. Keep your doors locked and stay out of the woods. It's no secret here at the All Bets Are Off podcast that we care about our listeners. So I have a couple questions for you guys. Is something preventing you from achieving your goals? Does something interfere with your happiness? If you answered yes to either one of those things, I need you guys to check out BetterHelp.com slash listener. And that's help. H-E-L-P. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. Connect in a safe and private online environment and you can even start communicating in under 48 hours. This is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. This is professional counseling done securely online. Send a message to your counselor anytime. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. 
all without ever having to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room or leave the comfort of your own home. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than any traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. The service is available for clients worldwide, so find the particular expertise you need online and don't limit yourself to counselors located near you. BetterHelp has licensed professional counselors who specialize in depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, sleeping, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBT matters, grief, and self-esteem. So anything you share is confidential. Again, it's extremely, extremely convenient, very professional, and incredibly affordable. So don't take my word for it. I need you to go to the website because testimonials are posted daily. Again, this is not a crisis line. In fact, so many people have been using better help that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. I want you to start living a happier life today as a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor, betterhelp.com slash listener. Join over 1 million people who've taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash listener. You know, you were also asked to come back uh, for season 12, but in that form, you were coming back as a coach. That had to be a really cool experience because now you're not in the hot seat, but you're preparing other people for what's ahead and trying to help them do the best tattoo they can. What was that experience like for you to just, you know, you have the knowledge already. You've been on Ink Master and now you're telling everybody else like, hey, here's what you got to do and here's what you got to look for. That had to be pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. It was... uh it was cool going back. Uh, I'll just be honest. As soon as I saw Ryan Ashley, I knew I wasn't winning. <laughs> and, it, and, and nothing against me or her as an artist. It's just I know how TV works, and they, you know, they want her to win, basically. So, uh, with that being said, it was a cool experience, and I did uh, the girl Laura Marie. I think she's the one that actually ended up winning. I told her that, you know, this one after I watched her tattoo, I was like, you're going to probably win. And I was like, you have it all. I mean, you're, you know, you're an attractive girl. You're a really good tattoo artist. I can see that you've got talent and you're not afraid. Like that day, whenever I was coaching, she picked the knee. Yeah. You know, that's a hard place to tattoo in general. And she was like, no, I want to do this. You know, she had no apprehensions about like, you know, oh, I'm going to fail at this. She was like, I'll, I'll do it, you know. So, and just watching her, I could tell, you know what I mean? It was a, she was definitely in the top three right off the bat. Yeah. No, I mean, in the same vein with you being, you know, having experience with season three and season 12, there must be people around that right off the bat, you know, well, this person's got no chance. This person's not going to win. Like, because now you know what they're looking for and you've been in that, that position. I don't want you to name names or anything, but like you, you probably saw those kind of people too as well, right? Yeah, that's when they when they cast a show. I always say this when somebody asks that question. I say when they cast the show, they can't cast eighteen guys that are killer because yeah. regular yeah. public will not see the difference between a good tattoo and a bad tattoo. So I always say it's like in thirds. There's gonna be th you know thirty percent that are just horrible, you know, or just starting out in their career that should there's no, they, there's no way they should be on the show. But and there's thirty average and there's thirty percent that are top tier, you know. So. That's, you can always see it usually on the show where you got three to five guys compete that are really going to compete to win it, you know? Yeah, right. And, you know, you, you mentioned at the end of season three, even when you were standing up there uh, with Jimmy and Tattoo Baby, that you didn't even think that Tattoo Baby was going to make the, the finals. Which which well, artist did you quit. think was strong? Yeah, right. <laughs> but, yeah, but she, on TV, you don't really see the whole thing that she did. But oh. on that episode where she they kind of were like vaguely talking about her quitting she actually quit you know oh. what i mean she she it took them an hour to talk her into staying okay so you know that kind of upset me in that sense because you know you see somebody like a, like craig there like just grinding it out and to me he should have won the first three challenges like he was that good mm -hmm. um but that's the only thing i meant by that no disrespect to her and the artist and she's actually grown a lot better now she's a really good artist but at that time she had a couple of missteps where like the joker tattoo she didn't finish the the thing around the lady's leg the garter belt whenever we did that challenge they uh she didn't finish you know what i mean and they were going to send somebody home 
Right. So if you didn't finish at the time, like that's, it's just, it's kind of misleading where, like, you know, when they say one thing and the next thing you know, they're doing another, you know, just like uh, a prime example is Scott Marshall on Walter's season, on Sausage's season. He, uh, on the Japanese challenge where there's like five people left, he had the word tattoo and they said, worst tattoo goes home. Right, right. Yeah. And I, I've noticed that a bunch of times too, like you said with, um, with Craig. And then they turn right around and they just, it's, it contradicts itself all the time. Yeah, yeah. And I, I caught that a, a few times, even with, um, I don't remember if it was your season or if it was uh, Sausage, but with Josh Hibbard, he had the worst tattoo multiple episodes in a row, but ended up staying, you know, through five more eliminations. And Right, yeah, over over Craig or, exactly. you know. Yeah. And, and that's, uh, I, I don't know what season Mark Longnecker was on, but he was at the bottom nine, nine times. Yes. <laughs> you, don't go to, you don't go to the bottom nine times without being buddies with one of the judges. Like, I'm just, just saying that out loud, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm okay with it, but it's like, you can't say you're not, you're, 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 you're not unbiased if you're, if clearly you are. Oh, yeah, a hundred percent. And even as just uh, somebody who's just a fan of the show who is is not a tattoo artist, I mean, I have a ton of tattoos, but uh, you know, I'm no artist. I can still see when, okay, this guy should have gone home by now because he's been at the bottom consecutively four to five times or more, like you said, nine. <laughs> yeah. 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 He was bragging. I made it to the bottom nine times. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but Besides, it's, uh, you know, you, you, I have to take it with a grain of salt. Like, now seeing the show over the years and going to the finales and going, you know, you can, it, 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 I would say in my own opinion that most of the time is maybe not the judges calling the shots a hundred percent of the time. Mm -hmm. And that's okay with me. You know what I mean? It's like, that's all reality shows is they try and gear who they think is going to be, I don't want to say popular with the vote, but just, you know, who's more a, Please, I don't know. I don't know how to even say it right, but I just feel like that seeing it, like Dave Cruzman never won a challenge. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's just things like that that happen that he clearly had the worst portrait probably in Ink Master history. Yeah. And, but he wins. You know what I mean? So there's things like that. Uh, even when Ryan Ashley won, I was there and I uh, was looking at the tattoos, the finale, just the finale tattoo. You no, know, she, she did well throughout, but. Yeah. Uh, when Dave Navarro says it took me 30 minutes to figure out an eyeball was driving that car, you win. Yeah. Like, it's like, how, how can you, but, and then Gian's tattoo was crazy. Like it was like the watercolor chess piece. You're like, wow, he actually pulled it off. It looks great. You know, it's the same as Jason Clay Dunn. Like his tattoo looked better at the end. So he won. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it is, it's, you gotta, art's always subjective. So, I'm always drawn towards realism art, you yeah. know, and, you know, when TJ Poole lost to, to, to Tony, you know, I, my visually, I'm like looking at the tattoo going, wow, you got a handful of guys in the world that could pull that tattoo off in the time frame. But, you know, Tony's tattoo looked great, but it was just like, it was, you know, the half of America could do that tattoo. Right. So that's the only thing I look at. Like I'm looking at it and I'm biased because that's what I like. So I've kind of stepped back from that now when I'm looking at stuff going, okay, I can appreciate traditional. I'm not drawn to it where I want to get one, but I can appreciate it for sure. That's got to be tough for you as an artist, though, now that you've you've said all that, because you're stepping back as just an artist and not a judge and not somebody who's producing a reality TV show and saying, man, I would have went with this one or that one. It, it's got to be frustrating when you're in the house seeing people get eliminated who shouldn't be and people, you know, staying who like, again, we'll go back to Craig because I thought he was going to be in the final. Yeah, yeah, and that, I, um, you know, like I said, being separated now for years from the show, I can see, you know, when I talk to people that get eliminated early, or then I know that a really good artist, there's like one kid that was in Louisiana, a sick artist, mm -hmm. and he got eliminated like in the first round, and I'm just like, if, if you go on one of these shows and you do not cooperate on being open or just even talking like, you know, you get guys that are really good artists, but they go in there and they shut down. They yeah. don't want to talk. If you don't cooperate and film or interact, 
they're going to just cut you, basically. Right. Okay, that you know, makes I mean, sense. Because it's it's almost like dead weight, where right? well, you can't you can't pull you know anything from a turn up. It's just sitting there, <laughs> right. not not cooperating with. Hey, we're going to film this. Let's do this. Be excited. Right. And you're just like, oh, I'm going to keep quiet. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. It so, makes sense. So, besides yourself, uh, who were some of your favorite artists that you would have picked to be in the finals? Say, say season three came and you weren't there, but you were just watching as a fan. Who were you hoping would would come to the finals? Well, I mean, seeing their art out of that show. I mean, that's the two I would pick right off the bat would be Craig and and uh, Jimmy. Jimmy, just yeah. knowing knowing Jimmy, and that you know Jimmy can say all he wants he didn't get to do his style he you could tell jimmy drew every drawing that he did you know what i mean he's a very he draws everything i'm more of a reproduction artist where i'll look at something and reproduce it mm -hmm. but he's more of like he's got his own style and you know he's just he's a really good talented artist outside of tattooing too so you know yeah for that season yeah i would say those two i don't know who the third one would have been it would have been up for grabs between you know, I actually, it's funny you say you went back and watched the season because my son now is four. So we've been kind of, uh, it's funny to watch it with him. <laughs> and I hadn't seen it in a good five, six years. So we sat down and we're just kind of like, he'll even say, now let's watch Ink Master, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so we've watched a couple seasons and I, it's funny to see yourself on TV that long ago yeah. and kind of see how you're acting or you know, you quickly, or they portray it like I quickly snap back at stuff. And I was like, oh, I don't remember it being like that. But like, it's all, a lot of it's editing where, you know. Right, <laughs> right. TV magic. <laughs> yeah. So are, are you still friends with anybody from that season that uh, maybe you had met for the first time when you got there? Well, yeah, Craig. Craig's been out here. Okay. I've had almost everybody come out to Vegas for a guest spot. Like Kyle Dunbar came through, Tattoo Baby came through. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, you know, so people, you know, especially being in Vegas, they'll, if they pop into town, if they come through, sometimes they come through ones on the ones in the later season, not so much, Yeah. but the ones that are right around my seasons, um, my first, the viewing party for when we first had my first episode, I had Steve Taft, I had Sarah Miller, Oh wow. you know, come out for this kind of cool, you know, Las Vegas, you got, they, Hey, come on out for this party. They're like, Oh sure. Come on out. You yeah. know, so, <laughs> so it was pretty cool. Man, Kyle Dunbar, he uh, he kind of lost a little on the next season when he snapped on Nunez. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's expected though. Like, they're, like this is behind the scenes stuff. But on my season, they kind of doing the same thing with Jason Clay Dunn. Yeah. At the end of when they're like, you're getting critiqued. At the end, with the last few people on the bottom, at the very end, one of them will make a little comment like, well, "You should tell so and so he should be down here too." Yep. And that would get in people's head and. On my season, it was Jason Clay Dunn. Mm -hmm. On the season with Kyle, that's what they were doing with Kyle. They were like, oh, you better tell Kyle. He should have been down here. He should have went home. And that just wore on him. You know what I mean? It wore on him and it wore on him. And, and I think, you know, they're both alpha males as far as Nunez. And, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. That. <laughs> and Kyle. So, <laughs> so, yeah, it, it got to him for sure. It got to him. And, you know, I think all of America wanted to see them come to blows. But yeah. I think once he... Once he actually physically pushed him, <laughs> he, he he said that all of his, he kind of was like, okay, cool. I pushed him. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it kind of went away. So, Right, right. Well, after all we've talked about today, um, you know, do you ever see yourself wanting to do a competition, anything like that ever again? I'll say this, never say never. All right. I like it. So what, that's, that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> so any, uh, any upcoming events or anything you have going on that you want to plug before we uh, let you get out of here today? Uh, well, we're actually going to open a store. We're going to open a shop in Houston. Oh, wow. I hope we're the first of a couple in Houston. I got a really good artist, Elijah, out there that he wanted to kind of team up. So he's going to run the Houston area for us. And that should be open in a couple of months. So I'll probably be going out there. You know, we're always looking to expand, but we have to keep it tight. You know, that's one of the hardest things in our industry is trying to find an artist that's good to work for us. So, um, but besides that, not really. I'm in the middle of my mother-in-law moved in. This is my week. My mother-in-law moved in like a month ago, unpacked all of her boxes, 
And then now I decided to buy a different house. So I'm packing all of our boxes up, <laughs> packing my house up, trying to open the store in Houston, trying to sell the store in Tahoe. Uh, we have an event today with Bosch Tools at the World of Concrete where I've got a couple guys out there tattooing wow. this whole big convention. Yeah, so we could ask to do that all the time, too, where we, the Vegas Golden Knights, we've tattooed in front of the arena, doing the free tattoos for them. Um, we do a lot of charity stuff out here. You know, when somebody has a store opening, sometimes we'll go to those. Like Levi's had us come do one where we did uh, did stuff. So it's pretty cool, you know. Wow. Well, I truly appreciate you squeezing us in today with uh, your busy schedule. And before I, you know, finally let you go, can you just plug your social media for anybody who doesn't already follow you so they can give you some follows? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Joey Hamilton Tattoo on Instagram and Facebook. And then on Twitter, it's Joey Hamilton Tat. And I, d I do have a big project. So if you're a fan of the show at all and you like my finale drawing for the piece, I have it hanging in my shop. I decided to make that into an NFT. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So and it's going to be reasonable. I'm going to do a thousand uh whatever they're called, prints or whatever they're going to be. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be 200 bucks. So if you're a fan of the show and you like that drawing, which is a really cool drawing, I'll be posting that on my social media and, and, or the revolt Instagram too. And it, and it'd be access to get that. So, and that'll be around February 1st. So. All right, rock soldiers. So once again, ink master, Joey Hamilton, winner of season three coach from season 12. So check him out on both. And uh, make sure you're giving him a follow on all of his social media. And if you ever plan on going to the Las Vegas area and you are a huge fan of tattoos and have a lot of ink, try and get in with Joey. But you need to plan it well in advance because he is booked solid for a long, long time. So start looking into it now, people. Revolt Tattoos owns it with uh, Season 4 finalist Sausage. And sounds like they're going to be expanding. So keep an eye out for Joey. And uh, thank you guys for listening to the All Bets Are Off podcast. And we will catch you next week. The preceding presentation has been brought to you by the Gear Network.